Hello and welcome back. Once again, it is time for the Golden Age of DC Comics. 365 days where I take this beloved hardcover coffee table book given to me about two decades ago by one of my best friends. This has been surfing my coffee table ever since and has been a constant source of comic book shop style conversations. The kind I want to recreate right here, right now, with you. Thank you so much for tuning in. The Golden Age of DC Comics runs between 1938 and 1955. The Silver Age between 1956 and 1970. The Bronze Age, I'm a Bronze Age baby, runs between 1970 and 1985. And the Copper Age begins about 1985. I get these definitions of the ages uh, from the glossary of the most current edition of the Overstreet Price Guide. This is a great resource I would suggest to any comics fan. I actually have a couple of books, too, that I, I'm going to show off by the end of the show that I would really like to tell any noob or young comics fan, someone new to this, you know, how to read comic books, how to get into this. It can be daunting, or it can be just as easy as opening up something interesting. Uh, this is a 2004 Abrams publication uh, written and curated by Les Daniels, Chip Kidd, and Jeff Spear. There is a link to the Amazon page in the description. You can get your own copy. It will look great on your coffee table. You can play along at home, and it makes a great gift for a geek. I know. Awesome. Let's get to it. I also usually do something called the escapism caveat. It's about how uh, it's about modernity and storytelling, and it's about the needs of. Um, agendas and activism and advocacy and how to balance that with escapism the absolute need to put aside this world's problems just for a few moments in a day uh so can the two be reconciled can the two be equally respected we get into it so check it out i'm going to put it over here a little later uh at the end of the show so uh yeah give it a like give it a subscribe <laughs> but give it a comment. You're, in a, you're a very important part of this because we are in a conversation about comic books. And we're going to get to it. Awesome. Um, we're going to use this 365 days book for its intended purpose. We're going to open to today's date. It is September the 4th. We're going to look at some comic book art from an antediluvian age. We're going to read the blurb. And then we're going to talk about comic books. And we're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year but first but first let me wet my whistle i'm about to do some talking <laughs> i'm from boston why do you sound like that sully mm -hmm. i also mumble <laughs> i had to learn how to speak all over again to do these um videos this is a really good coffee it's ethiopia guji this is a light roast. It has notes of blueberry, cane sugar, rose, lemon, and peach. Ain't that a peach? It's a really good cuppa. It was roasted very recently. It was ground just minutes before I added the hot water. This is a good cup of coffee. There's a button on my banner. You can get your own. This is not a paid endorsement. This is just me hawking my friend's goods, and it's good. I love coffee. Let's get to it. I hope you're doing awesome, and I hope you're pro you're clobbering your problems and not being clobbered by them. There's a choice to be made, and you can stand up to the bullies of the external life and the most important one, the internal one itself, the negative self-talk. I know, because I do that myself. This is a good one. Awesome. Pencils by Dick Sprang. Inks by Charles Paris from Tech. Detective Comics, number 179, from January of 1952. And November and the elections are just a few months away, so things are starting to get political. Yeah, it smells like team spirit out there. Oh, gosh. Oh, the tribalism. But this is great. I want to talk. We're going to look at this comic book art. And then we're going to talk about this. This is like, hooray. Bruce Wayne for our new mayor. Bruce Wayne, that's the ticket. And then you got over on the other side, Batman, Man of the Year, Ray for Batman and Robin. 
What's the matter, Bruce? Looks as though you're seeing things. Then it's a ticker tape parade, and they're in a city, and they're in a street in the daylight, too. And Batman's more of a nocturnal creature. And remember, there, I, I like certain parts of the Batman mythos. Uh, my favorite parts are when it's adhered to that there is no photographic evidence of the Batman. None. And he's a myth, an urban myth. So for even like, you know, for Superman to say like, oh yeah, I'll talk to Batman about it. It's like, bah, yeah, you believe in the boogeyman? You know, it's that deep. It's like deep cover. I've always loved that. But let's, let's read the blurb and then let's talk about comics. The alter ego demanded of many costumed crime fighters gave writers endless opportunities. In this fanciful splash panel, it looks like Batman and Bruce, R Bruce Wayne are running against each other in a mayoral election. In the story itself, Bruce Wayne has been appointed honorary mayor of Gotham for a week. And a criminal who suspects Wayne's dual identity dresses up as Batman whenever Bruce is too busy to appear in his superhero suit. It takes double disguises, detective work, and even a dose of hypnotism to set things straight. But this variation on the doppelganger theme has the expected happy ending. And let's look at this once again. Yeah. And um, is it social commentary? Um, is Well, this is a page from the story itself, so it's... Um, so it's 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 really interesting, but uh, I, I I mean to posit this. Pr let's do a thought experiment. Pretend that you are a denizen of Gotham City. That's right, uh, East Side, West Side, the the, the, the Barons, um, the Palisades, wherever the heck you're from. Um, you're a Gothamite, and um, you're voting for mayor, and you don't know the big secret that some do. But your mayoral choices this year are billionaire Bruce Wayne or the Batman. Who are you voting for? The face of capitalism or, you know, I mean, how many buzzwords can we throw at this? I'm not, I don't want to throw any buzzwords at this. But the face of, of, of business and of also philanthropy, too. Like the Waynes have historically been, uh, been very beneficial to the city of Gotham helping building infrastructure and new jobs and things. So, you know, maybe it has something to do with Bruce Wayne or Batman's ownership of the city because he literally holds the lease for many, many buildings. Hmm, maybe that's why he doesn't get sued as much for all that destruction and mayhem. Let's get back to it. Who are you voting for? Let's say like they're this... But they, let's say they represent two different parties. Let's say they represent two different ideologies and two different methods on how to run um, a, go a government, a local government, a, a city government, a state government, or even a country government. But the joke is, is they're the same person? And it's about our perception of which one we choose when it's actually going to be the same person all around making choices and leading. I think that's is pretty interesting. And uh, but who would you vote for? Put that in the comment section. Uh, would Batman get my vote, or would it be billionaire billionaire playboy Bruce Wayne? Hmm. He's got a successful company. Um, He's, uh, he knows the city. He's very, you know, active and, 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 and cleaning up this, uh, you know, the, uh, he's very active, let's say, in Wayne Tech and, and, and doing this and that, you know, over in the city. That's part of Bruce Wayne's public persona. But then you also have Batman. When's he going to have time to run the city? You know, is that going to take away from his, his primary duties, which is crime fighting and costume adventuring and saving the world who knows maybe he can balance you know work life and 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 and, and child and robin <laughs> that's a that's a that's a that's a pun but um what do you think i mean i don't know who i'd vote for i usually vote for a third party to be honest don't blame me 
I voted for Joe Jorgensen. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not even a libertarian. But I mean, the only a two party system is only one party away from being a one party system. You know, we need a little bit, you know, the freedom of choice. We need more choice. We need more, more options to select. You know, it's the, the world can't just be Marlboro and Camel, Pepsi or Coke, this or that. You know, there's a whole spectrum of humanity in between. And maybe we should drop all these labels and all these parties and all these tribes and just get back to a unity. Shut up, Sully. Have a sip of coffee. That's all I got for today. Let's um, look at this comic book art just one more time. Dick Sprang pencils. Um, he's the, the, the master of Batman of the Golden Age. One of them who really defined the look and the feel of... Uh, look at that utility belt. You know, I, I think it's Frank Miller that introduces the pouches. The very practical pouches. But before that, it was very sci-fi where you had these capsules and miniaturized versions of things. I love looking at cutaways of, of, of the bat, uh, the utility belt from old DC handbook. Uh, they had an A to Z, uh, the, the dictionary. And um, while over at across the street with Marvel, they're, you know, they, another binary choice, right? You only have the big two, you have Marvel or DC. No, you got plenty more in between. Boom, IDW, Dynamite, Dark Horse, the list goes on and on and on and on. And then there's also the new indie scene, too. I'm into that, too. But um, I love old Batman art. It just It's really fun. And, of course, we can look at it and be picky from our point in history and be like, well, this is like this really should be a bit more you know, diverse and inclusive and representative. And you know what? That wasn't the concern of storytelling back then. But it is now. And you'll see, we see that more and more. I just can't, there's only so much of shaking my fist at the past that I can do. But what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Like and subscribe, please. I would love to earn your subscription. We've been talking about comic books and we're gonna talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. So tune in tomorrow, 3 p.m. US Eastern and we'll find out who we're talking about when we turn the page tomorrow. Please like and subscribe. Turn on those notifications and ring that bell. Make it rain. I would love to grow my little station. I I'm having a good time making um, YouTube content, talking about comic books every day. This elates me. Uh, I get on panel shows now talking about comic books. I can, I'm can. i proving the point. We can talk about comic books every day. We are doing it. And, and, it's, and it's a huge subject, and we can just keep learning more and more about it and exposing ourselves to new characters, new stories, new storytelling methods, and art. I just, I, all of these things together, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah, and um, just real quick, I mentioned a couple of books uh, that, that will enrich you as a, uh, a fan. One, I just got my, my third lifetime copy of this, but it's How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. I thought it was really important important, uh, especially when it comes to the dynamism of, uh, say, something like such as this. Look, it says weak, weak, not bad, best. You know, and these are body positions where the uh, the opponent's going to basically throw a strike or a punch. And see, the, 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 the top stuff says weak. And the follow-through or the wind-up have the most power as an image. Now, I like how it, like, I was right about that, like, you know, in my exposure to comics, but it doesn't answer why. And that's, I'm going to be asking my comic book friends about that. Also, this is uh, Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. I am starting a reread of this. Uh, this is a, a great book. It's a comic book about comic books, and it's about storytelling, about the comic book storytelling values. It's about uh, sequential art, and it's about. Uh, say photorealism to a cartoon you know what i mean there's a spectrum of different art styles there's so much to learn about your hobby and i'm here for that i'm here for you leave a comment leave a question um I, I, let's continue this conversation god bless namaste good luck and we will see you tomorrow in the funny pages ciao take care Bye bye